All right, well, staying here with our international tournament of football on the Sportsmax zone, the Copa America began its quarterfinal stage on Thursday with defending champions Argentina needing penalties to oust Ecuador following a one-all draw in regulation time. Argentina skipper Lionel Messi missed his Peninca attempt to start the penalty shootout, but Emi Martinez, as he so often does, came up clutch and saved Ecuador's first two penalties to give Argentina the advantage which Nicolas Otamendi drove home to win the shootout. Well, let's see the complete quarterfinal bracket. What do we have here? Of course, in the quarterfinals, Argentina and Ecuador lands. We have um, that matchup. So uh, they've already decided that. So Argentina through to the semis. The other matches, uh, Venezuela to face Canada. Colombia, that's tonight, by the way, Venezuela, Canada. Colombia taking on Panama and Uruguay facing Brazil. Those are the remaining quarterfinals so three semi-final spots still to be decided yeah and the two CONCACAF teams remain in the tournament with one of them Canada taking on Venezuela tonight well Brent Sancho is still with us to preview that clash and discuss so much more Brent thank you so much for staying with us uh, I'm trying to decide let's talk about that clash tonight um, of course it's gonna be an exciting matchup Canada is still in one of our very own CONCACAF teams how do you see that one turning out well, I think if you ask both teams leading into this fixture uh, which team they would want to play they would probably choose each other uh, so both teams would probably come into this fixture uh, buoyed by the fact uh, they're playing the lesser of the what is remaining in the group uh, and they believe that they, they generally believe that they have a chance. Uh, Venezuela has been a surprise uh, outfit in this tournament in the sense of where they are now uh, in the, the quarterfinal stages. Uh, and they would feel what they've done so far. They've had a very good attack, but led by Rondon, who's done tremendously well. There's a lot of flexibility in the way that they play. And Canada, despite the fact that they dominated uh, in, in the CONCACAF qualifiers before the last World Cup, they went into a huge lull and a lot of disappointing results. Remember, this is a team that played uh, Trinidad and Tobago to get into this Copa. Uh, and uh, since so far, they've, sh they've been very resolute defensively uh, and they've been explosive going forward, of course, in the likes of Jonathan David, Alfonso Davis. Of course, they lose uh, uh, young Buchanan, who uh, injured his tibia in practice this week. Yeah. Uh, but outside of that, I think Canada would feel that they have every opportunity to go on and win this fixture. Uh, similarly, like Venezuela, I, I think it would be a very tight game. Uh, might be a bit cagey, I must say, Mariah, with both teams uh, reaching this far in the tournament. However, I expect a, a, it's still an exciting uh, match of football. Yeah, and despite Venezuela being perfect in the group stages, uh, Brent earlier today listening to a press conference from the coach saying that, you know, all of that is done and dusted. We can't really focus on that. And, you know, really putting respect where the Canadian opponents are concerned. So I love that mindset from coach, you know, recognizing that we have done this much to get this far. We've been undefeated, but against Canada, you can't really think about those previous matches. It's like you're starting from scratch again. Yeah, and you have to obviously take things into context. Uh, this is a Venezuela team that got past Mexico, had a good result against Jamaica as well. Uh, and of course, uh, in a group with, with Ecuador, who eventually came out and lost last night to, to Argentina. Uh, it's not a group that uh, anyone fancied them coming out of, uh, but they've done that and they're here. And, and as I said, when you look at the format of the competition, of course, once the game is tied at the end of regulation, it goes to penalty kicks. It gives teams like Venezuela a puncher's chance, as I said, to, to progress in this tournament. And the way they have played so far, they look very comfortable in their skin. Uh, they look like a team that, that fully understands their role and function and what they need to do to win football games. And they've played within themselves every opportunity to progress. As I said, Canada would feel the same way as well. But uh, you must be a thought for Venezuela and what they've done so far. Their body of work throughout the tournament has been superb. Yeah, and whatever winner uh, comes up tonight, Brent, they'll be looking at Argentina, who were winners last night, had to go to penalties. Your overall thoughts on, on last night's first quarterfinal? Yeah, I was hugely disappointed for Argentina. I, I thought they hung on and they were, uh, should be told, Lance, they're very fortunate. Of course, Martinez and his usual heroics that we're coming, we're getting used to, uh, got them into the, the next stage of the tournament. But you have to spare a to that man there and, and right on cue. Lionel Messi and his performance last night. You wonder if he's fully recovered from his injury because what he put, what he did last night is just not acceptable for Argentina to progress. We have to remember, this is a World Cup winning team and they won on the basis of fully understanding 
that they will have to play one man short when they play defensively, but they have a terrific outlet in Lionel Messi when they do win the ball offensively. That need happen neither offensively or defensively for them. And Ecuador, truth be, truth be to Ecuador, probably should have gone on to win that football match. They were very unfortunate. Argentina has to, has to of course, improve their performance 100 fold. Now, Argentinian fans may be looking at it. They're playing the winner of, of Venezuela and Canada and may think it doesn't matter what type of performance they put in, they might get a result. But I think they need to improve their performance, Argentina, if they are to go on and, and, and of course, uh, defend their Copa America championship. Yeah, so would it be worrying, Brent, as an Argentina fan, that Messi is below par on a night when other players weren't able to, you know, step up and, 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 and fill the breach? Yeah, it, it is always uh, the conundrum that Argentina faces, isn't it, Lance? Because you're asking a lot of McAllister, you're asking a lot of uh, Rodrigo De Paul, you're asking a lot uh, of that middle, uh, so Fernando, uh, so Fernando, sorry, in the middle of the park. Uh, and if those guys put one foot wrong, left or right, it does have an impact on the result. They have to play for an next man. And, and it's no disrespect to, to Lionel Messi. The expectations is that that is your outlet, that is your spark, that is the man that can win you football games. So the so players will put in that extra effort to try to win. And, and as as you rightfully alluded to, they just can't afford to slip up. Those those players that are supporting Messi, Messi can because they've done it in the past and they've won it. They, they, they've had games where he didn't play particularly well, but the others supplemented him so well that they gave him that chance to win football games. But if they perform badly, or if so many of them perform badly, you just can't see how Argentina are going to win. And I think that is the challenge that they have moving forward. Now, they can look at this and say, well, it's a one-off. But it is a worrying sign what we saw against Ecuador. Yeah, and when you look at the, the, the Argentina setup and, and how they are, are prepared to play, um, they would have gone into this tournament as favorites, as the reigning, as the reigning world champions. I know that Messi... Well, the handling of Messi, especially because he's getting older, would dictate that if he's not 100% fit, that he may not play. You referenced a couple of minutes ago, Brent, that you're not sure if the injury is still bothering him. So could it be that he's not 100%, but because of love of country and desire to see uh, the Argentines prevail in this tournament, that he may be pushing it even with, with an injury? Because the, the Messi I know, if he has an injury, he would, he would more or less give himself some time to recover. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's, it's one of those, though, Lance, and, and, and as much as I don't want to compare it to the Cristiano Ronaldo situation, at, at some point, a player, when you're getting older, you do have to put your hand up. I, I know there is, of course, that super stardom that comes with both players, that understanding that they have to be on the pitch. Without them, they won't win football games. But there's also the understanding that there is a team dynamic that could be woefully thrown off if both players don't be accurately honest and very, very honest about what they can and cannot do. Uh, and when you get older, it's not just about showing up and putting in 75 or 70% 70 performance. You have to put 100 because you're aging now. You, you lost a step a bit, that thinking process a little bit slower, etc., etc. And I just feel that if Lionel Messi is not 100% fit, even if he's 90% fit, he just can't play uh, because the game requires so much. I and mean, this is no disrespect from what these two phenomenal players have given to the sport, but I'm talking about the right now. I'm talking about where they are as players. It is very much understandable that they have to be 100% fit to be able to give this sort of production to their respective teams to win tournaments. Can they win their team tournaments? Of course they can. But they have to be at the optimum, their optimum best currently to be able to contribute. And if that's not the case, then you shouldn't play them. Yeah, and before you wrap, Brent, uh, give us a, a, a quick prediction on, on the weekends or the quarterfinals. Quickly, Colombia, Panama. I, I just think the Colombians are too strong and they'll win that one. Yeah. Brazil, Uruguay. As much as I'm a Brazilian fan, Lancer, uh, sorry to say Uruguay is my favorite to go all the way, but Uruguay and Colombia. I do think that uh, whoever wins that Uruguay Colombia semi finals will yeah. go on to win the Copa. Okay, Brent, we'll talk to you again next week, I'm sure. Thanks, man. Have a good one, guys. Yeah, bye. We'll be back with more on the Sportsman Zone after this.